Hi, my name is Rui Guo. I'm a PhD candidate working in Dr. Sheng Ye's lab at Zhejiang University in Hangzhou. This is a video summary of our paper, Ionic Interactions of Barium Blockades in the MTHK Potassium Channel, published in the Journal of General Physiology. Potassium channels control the electric potential across cell membranes. They catalyze the rapid selective diffusion of potassium ions down their electrochemical gradient. The structure of the potassium channel has provided a firm basis for understanding the mechanisms of rapid potassium ion transport in cells. The crystal structures of KCSA potassium channel in its closed state reveal an ion conduction pathway that consists of a selectivity filter and an adjacent central cavity. Such an ion conduction pathway allows multiple potassium ions to simultaneously occupy inside and to interact with each other. The structures of the isolated ion conduction pore of MTHK in its open conductive state revealed a similar selectivity filter and a central cavity. Whereas, the high resolution allowed us to probe the barium block mechanism in a more highly accurate structural way than the earlier studies. MTHK is a calcium-gated potassium channel from Methanobacterium thermoautotrophicum. Through the interactions of dehydrated potassium ions within the channel selectivity filter, high conduction rates are achieved in the setting of exquisite ion selectivity. Based on Murray Cabral's findings, under physiological conditions, the potassium selectivity filter usually contains two resident potassium ions separated by a water molecule. The ion pair moves back and forth in a concerted manner between the 1, 3, and 2, 4 configurations until a third ion enters on one side, causing the displacement of an ion on the opposite side. The structure of the selectivity filter is designed by selection to have a maximum rate of conduction through minimization of the energy difference between the 1, 3, and 2, 4 ion configurations. In many studies, ionic interactions inside the conduction pathway of potassium channels are probed with barium, a high affinity blocker of numerous potassium channels. Barium is the only alkaline earth metal that blocks potassium channels, presumably because it uniquely shares high similarity with the alkaline metal potassium in terms of the ionic radius while doubling the charge. The similar size allows barium ions to fit into the potassium channel selectivity filter. However, the charge apparently causes tight binding, preventing the rapid flow of potassium. Therefore, two questions arise. Does the MTHK channel share a similar property of barium blockade with that of other potassium channels? What are the structural basis of the internal and external lock-in and enhancement effects of barium blockade in potassium channels? Since MTHK is a calcium-gated potassium channel, we choose alanine-88 aspartic acid mutant instead of wild-type MTHK channel in this study because this mutant channel is constitutively active with extremely high open probability in the absence of calcium. This shows some traces of the outward currents of this mutant. The channel is fully open, with only rapid closings within a burst. 200 micromole barium was then added to the internal side of the channel to induce block, whereas about 10 millimole barium was needed to see significant blockade effect at the external side, indicating that the MTHK channel shares an asymmetric barium blockade with many other potassium channels. However, the barium block kinetics is strongly affected by externally applied potassium ions. As shown in these figures, 10 millimole potassium dramatically increased barium block duration. We soaked the MTHK pore crystals in a stabilization solution containing 10 millimole barium and 100 millimole sodium or 10 millimole barium and 100 millimole potassium 
and determine their structures at 2.4 and 2.15 angstrom resolution, respectively. To study the occupancy of barium ions in the selectivity filter at the barium sodium environment, we compared it with those at sodium and potassium environment. The electron density in the filter of the barium sodium complex is stronger than that of the sodium complex and potassium complex, indicating that the selectivity filter is occupied by a heavier barium ion. By assuming that the area under the peaks of the one-dimensional electron density profile along the central axis of the filter reflects the number of electrons in the filter, we compared the one-dimensional electron density profiles and estimated an increase of 46 electrons compared with the sodium complex. This is roughly equivalent to the replacement of a sodium ion with a barium ion suggesting a single barium ion bound in the filter of the barium sodium complex. At the wavelengths used for data collection, anomalous scattering of barium dominated in the protein. We then calculated an anomalous difference Fourier map of the barium sodium complex and observed non-equivalent barium occupancy at the four sites of the MTHK filter. The anomalous signal at site 2 is much stronger than that at sites 3 and 4, with no substantial signal observed at site 1. This suggests that the barium ion predominantly occupies site 2 at the barium sodium environment and has no binding at site 1. The same analysis of the barium potassium complex revealed that the electron density is substantially stronger than that of the potassium complex, but weaker than that of the barium sodium complex, indicating a partial barium ion bound in the filter of the barium potassium complex. The anomalous difference Fourier map further revealed non-equivalent barium occupancy. However, different to that in the barium sodium environment, Barium ions predominantly occupy sites 3 and 4 in the barium potassium environment and have no binding at sites 1 and 2. So why does only a single barium ion bind in the filter instead of two, like that of alkaline metal ions? Charge balance provides an explanation. The selectivity filter contains 20 oxygen atoms surrounding a 12 angstrom long narrow pore. The configuration would seem to be unstable, as the repulsive force between the two barium ions is fourfold than that of potassium ions. Our high-resolution structural data allow us to clearly define the internal and external login and enhancement effects, as shown in the figure. Without barium, two potassium ions bind equivalently in the 1, 3, and 2, 4 configurations. With the addition of barium from the internal side, barium enters the filter and initiates block by occupying the S4 side. The electrostatic repulsion between barium and potassium allows the barium ion to effectively drive out potassium ions from the selectivity filter, leaving a single barium ion alternating between S2, S3, and S4 sites and blocking the passage of potassium ions. The addition of external potassium in low concentration causes potassium ion binding at its high affinity site 1, locking barium at site 4, and preventing barium from exiting to the external side. Although external potassium in high concentration allows the potassium ion to enter site 2, it forces barium ion dissociation to the internal site by the electrostatic repulsion. The internal potassium or other permanent ions can occupy the central cavity, locking the barium ion mainly at site 2 and preventing the barium ion from exiting to the internal site. In conclusion, in the barium sodium environment, a single barium ion shares occupancy among sites 2, 3, and 4, binding predominantly at site 2 and does not bind site 1. Whereas, in the barium potassium environment, 
Barum partially occupies sites 4 and 3 and does not bind sites 1 and 2. Our high-resolution structural data allow us to clearly define the internal and external login and enhancement effects. In the future, we plan to take an in-depth view of the potassium channel ion selectivity and their physiological conditions. To analyze and determine the potassium channel ligand gating mechanism, and to gain structural and functional insights into the channel blockade mechanism. We thank Yu Xinjiang for discussions and critical reviews of the manuscript, Sheng Huang and Jian Hua He at the Shanghai Synchrotron Radiation Facility for on site assistance. This work was supported in part by these funds. Thank you for your attention.